Welcome to Paradise. And this is the Schaefer 375. I reckon for some of you, this boat could be your ticket to happiness. We're on the Schaefer 375. This thing is an entertainer's dream. That's gonna create a really cool vibe. I'm getting into this Brazilian vibe. So it's under 40 feet, she's an entertainer's dream. And I reckon a boat like this is gonna be quite a welcoming boat. Something that will welcome a lot of people into their own boat life. What do I mean by that? I mean outboard convenience. I mean the ability to take a lot of people out on the boat for the day and kind of all weather situations with all the protection we have from the glass and the roof, it's really gonna be able to extend your season. So depending where you are, a boat like this will allow you to use it a lot more. We are in Brazil. I didn't actually know much about this place, uh, apart from I knew they're really good at soccer and surfing because there's so many Brazilians in Sydney. I didn't know this place is a manufacturing powerhouse. They got German heritage here. They make jets and they make really good boats. So a lot to discover. And today we're on the Schaefer 375. This thing is an entertainer's dream. Uh, it's a package underneath 40 or under 40 feet. With the drop down wings, it feels a hell of a lot bigger. So we're just gonna tour right through the boat. And as you can see, because of this design with the outboards, we have the best location. That is my point of the day. Um, it gives you options, the ability to trim these things out of the water. Yes, you can have the stern drives as well for those of you who want the complete transoms. But for so many of you in the States and in Australia who love this sort of thing on the sandbar or coming into the beach, this opens up so many areas for you. At the end of the day, you probably go boating to visit places like this. So why not save the whole tender journey or the swim and just go here? That's what you can do. And naturally, it's gonna be the most protected spot. So that's what I really, really like about boats of this design and this style. Okay, so starting out the back of the boat, we've got a decent swim ladder actually, and you can pull yourself up on this particular design. It's a permanently fixed one, obviously they'll concertina and fold up. And then we have the pop-up cleat just there. A reasonably sturdy ski pole here, which works well as a grab handle and allows you to transit through this area here. This hinges, and then you've got this space open to allow the engines to trim up. And I just want you to pay attention, the props are all out of the water. The whole unit is out of the water, even with our weight on the back of the boat, um, except for the middle one, because that's a little bit lower. Um, this central lounge here is optional, or what I mean by optional, there are different options for this layout. So you can actually get a mini bar at the back, you can do a day bed if you choose, or you can do this arrangement. And if you just get a feel for the amount of beam we have here, one, two, three, four, without the wings. So if you include these wings, we're talking like six meters beam. So it, it really does facilitate multiple families hanging out for the day. So. When I say a boat like this is welcoming, if all your mates just wanna come and join you at last minute without notice, something like this, you can be like, you know what? Your three extra buddies or my other boat wouldn't have fit and just wouldn't have worked. You can kind of make it happen on something like this. So that's why I see these full beam designs making it work for some of you. Electron, electric uh, deployable sunshade out the back here, super handy. Sensibly designed storage underneath all these seats. They're on hinges every single one of them over here as well they're on these double hinges here they come up really really intelligently all of this upholstery is done in-house here in brazil got this nice teak coffee table here this one's fixed and then she folds up to form a grab handle and a drink holder just there so that's pretty neat access into the equipment room below and then this lounge area here is protected under the shade just here so again another point for the welcoming aspect of a design like this if it's a cold day if it's a rainy day or if you know if, if the wind's just a little bit too chilly you can you know, close all this up and kind of climate control to the extent that is possible but if it's too hot you can also drop these electric windows 
open this door here, pop the sunroof and get natural ventilation. We also have air conditioning at the helm, so we have options. Got some nice mood lighting above us just here. So we've got blue and then lighter mood lighting up here. This is all a leatherette type finish, so it's soft to the touch, quite nice. That's gonna create a really cool vibe of an evening. And I also see some blue running along the black strip uh, of, of the headliner just here. So again, that's gonna bathe those seats in a little bit of blue. It's gonna look really, really cool of an evening. Same thing underneath the Corian bench top here. So just imagine looking from the dock or from the beach of an evening, this thing's gonna really sort of stand out quite a bit. So opening up the Corian here, we've got the electric Barbie just there. That's a Kenyan setup. Got the heat plate there and the safety. And then in the middle, got a sink just here, full of our crap at the moment, but that's a sink. And then, uh, I don't even know actually what this is. It's just some sort of wet item storage area because it is drained. I'm not actually sure what the function of that is. So drop a comment below if you have an idea, because I don't. There's a fridge just there with a freezer drawer and <laughs> my board shorts. <laughs> that's actually for the glassware. <laughs> you can see I've been in the water. I had to, had to get my board shorts to do the opening scene. So actually it's supposed to be for the glassware. We've got a subwoofer just here and some quite functional and good looking helm seats. So come around Marlene, allow everyone to see this. Um, we do go for quite an extensive test drive and demonstrate how to get this boat on the beach. So if you're interested in this boat at the end of the video, I'll link to a separate demonstration where you can come for a test drive with us. You are more than welcome to join. So it's a double bolster that drops down like so and gives you quite a comfortable um, lounging driving position here with two footrests on an angle. And I believe they've really set this up for people of all sizes. Yes, you know, some of these boats, particularly the European ones, are a little bit tighter at the helm. And as you move around, I feel the space on this one is a much more um, suited to perhaps the Aussie or the American clientele. And the seat itself, I mean, flipped up, look how big that is, and look how much space there is in front of my knees there. So if you're a bigger bloke or woman, you're gonna be absolutely fine. And if you're my height, they've got you sorted as well with, ba-boom, check that out. So that now gives me full access out through the convertible roof. But if it's too hot, you don't want the roof open, just do this, how quick's that? Boom, boom, super convenient. And I also really like these electric drop down windows here, just done from the dash. So you can reach out and communicate with people, but it also gives you access to your cleats. Because remember, it's not a walk around, it's full beam. So you do actually need that when you're coming into the dock if you need to secure the boat. Drink holder and a wine bottle holder just next to me, phone charging, air conditioning here, triple engine start with the keys, trim tab operation, um, the hood, sunroof, windscreen wipers, horn, black water pump out, two big screens installed just here, fusion, simrad, phone holding. I'd probably make sure they're not out there for too long in the hot sun because your phones might overheat. Got the joystick operation just here, the winch and all your other lights. And just the one drink holder on this side, but it's okay because we've got two on that side, so you are catered for, not a problem. I'm standing on the teak, we've got some mood lights all around, and the other thing that I noted, we've been driving this boat all day, so we've done a couple of hours on the engines already. This construction has been done very well. Not all boats of this design do that appropriately. What do I mean by that? Some of them vibrate too much, and some of them you don't really wanna leave the door open when you're underway. We were belting along at 35 knots. It's quite a hot day today, and we had the air streaming through. Not a problem, because it's got these double gas struts there, and look at the construction. With this design here and the thickness of the glass, it's just super solid. And then when it is in place, this design acts like a drain, so any water coming onto the windscreen is actually gonna drain and go forward. It's not gonna leak out. So this is actually one of the better ones or the best design of this uh, style that I have seen. You can see all the glassware storage is behind and then you've got a drain on the floor because we go from flat to slightly elevated as we make our way forward, which let's do it. So you got a little storage area here. I'd always be careful storing things here because they are definitely gonna overheat. So don't put electronics there, but books, maps, that sort of thing is okay. And this little door here is great for stopping wind. So if it's cold and you want to stop wind entering the cockpit, close that one. 
otherwise just leave it open allow the airflow to penetrate the boat so welcome to the bow I've got to say just off point there's a lot of good looking roosters here in Brazil. The people here look after themselves. Every morning I've been getting up, they're all jogging, cycling, working out, eating small portions of food. We've done quite a lot of eating out. The Brazilians, they've, they've, they've got a thing or two going for them. That's, that's, that's my notice. That's what I've noticed so far. Anyway, Sun Lounge. Four people up here, no problems. But drop down, oh yeah, look, definitely for four people. Two, four, Got enough space, sleep up here, no worries. Yeah, do we have sun protection? I don't see any poles. That could be an option. You'd have to check with your dealer, I can't tell. The windscreen wiper is one big windscreen wiper and it's a stainless steel one. So that's gonna last a little bit longer than the mild steels and it's got a washing function. So that's all good. The roof itself, would you put surfboards up there? I don't think you would because it's that's all part of the sunroof um, movable part. It's too complicated to put surfboards or stand up paddle boards. I would actually keep boards along here if you're just going out for the day and you want to leave them inflated. That seems like a more logical place if you want to do particularly long boards. That makes more sense. So we've got access down into the cabin just here. That's going to be emergency exit and airflow. And then we can see the single bow roller and the electric anchor windlass, we can operate that from the helm as well. You can see the chain on the port side, fenders on the starboard. Good to see the cleat there. And that's the brake for the clutch just there. And you operate it with the foot pedals just here. Got a couple of cleats up on the bow. Now, the only thing is, I don't see much protection from the glass here. So you might want to install a rope protector uh, just for longevity, depending on the angle of your cleats on the dock. So not all, not all ropes are gonna go down harshly if the cleat's over there. So just pay attention to that. If you've got the wrong angle, sort it out. Okay, JL Audio, got some blue lights just here. They're spreading their way all the way around the boat. And I think I've sort of covered everything there. Now I can't, I think the main feature really is these drop down wings. Makes it feel so huge. Got our fuel shut off in there. That's everything that I've noticed so far. Let's head down and check out the cabin. So the companion way is on some decent sail tracks. So that is never going to jam, rather than those ones that you just have to slide. Then you come down these opposing stairs and into a space that feels like a Sea Ray Sundancer, a Regal XO, or even that Galleon uh, GTO, if you've seen it. There is some similarities between all of those. Um, that's the feeling when I get down here. Lots of space, manageable surfaces. So we've got soft, furnishings here, nice soft carpet, timber, but then we're going to a century fiberglass and then uh, leatherette up on the roof. So this is gonna be easy to clean. So if you've got kids or you know want to do a bit of entertaining down here and who knows what happens, it's gonna be a surface that can be maintained. Just think about that. Um, this can be converted into a bed. So there's an infill with cushions. Space wise, it's like a big queen back there and a double up here because of the shape of course the cushions are very comfortable the foam is thick and you've got views out to the water on either side better on starboard through those windows there and the headroom for me at 57 I've still got a few inches above my head but as soon as I step away from the bed you get all of that space just there so once again I'm thinking Americans Aussies who tend to go for a bigger volume you're going to notice it on this boat so just making our way around, we've got shelving in here. Nice timber finish. I like the curve there, that's a nice touch. I also like the fact that people aren't gonna hurt themselves with these curves as we make our way around. Some drop-in storage there. Same again on the other side. So that's gonna be good for storing things of an evening. There's a little bit of storage underneath the seats, but not too much. Got some mood lighting just there. Light uh, 240 charging, I should say, your plugs there, air conditioning control, some, also some mood lighting um, behind the bed head. I'm gonna call that the bed head. I don't, know if that, I don't know if that's the correct term for it. This is the exit that I spoke about before. So you go out, emergency exit, or let air through from the sun lounge. We got air conditioning pumping its way in just here. And then here is our dinette, little galley setup. Obviously we've got the Barbie um, station upstairs where you're probably going to do most of your food prep but you're going to store a few other items down here so they've 
intelligently designed these drawers here and check out what they've done. That's leather and it just holds your cutlery. I like that because it means they're not going to rattle around when you're bouncing through waves. So that's good thinking. Uh, microwave, uh, another in ingeniously designed door there to take, take uh, you know, use the available space. And we've got our Schaefer branded uh, cutlery and plates down there. Space behind here, big screen TV above. And we've just got our switch panel here. Wabasto and Genset operation just there and fridge just in here. And then I think we'll check out the head before we go into the other accommodation space. Again, spacious. I don't feel any air conditioning venting into this space, but we do have an opening port there. Fresh water flush toilet. I've got storage shelves just here. Lots of storage on both sides with the loo roll holder and spare loo roll holders below it. Got the decent basin and a proper separate stand-up shower. So that's, again, pretty handy. If you're spending a few days, um, you're gonna wanna have that. And for privacy, don't worry, they're not gonna see your bits because you can pull that down. That's plastic, so it's okay to get wet. Everything else in here feels like just materials that can get wet, so don't worry about that. And we've got a drainage area and a nice, nice finish on the floor there too. Back onto the soft carpet and closing this door. Heaps of headroom here. You step down one and onto the biggest bed on the boat. This central piece moves, so if you need the extra space to move around. And then I'll just lie on this bed to give you a sense of the space. So there's my feet on the end. That's how big it is, okay? And it's a little bit wider, but I've just cushioned it with the cushions there. You could even just chill out and do this as well, because that's quite a soft leather finished bed head there. We've got charging on both sides. You've got cupboards accessible, also air conditioning chillers tucked in there as well. But that's an example of the storage we have on the side. So you could actually pack away some of your bags that you brought with you for the day, take your bits and pieces out of the bags and then stow them in there and then put other items on top of here that you want to get access to because there's a ledge that will stop them falling. So that's all pretty sensible. Got some down lights, beautiful windows on either side. We don't have a privacy curtain. So if that's important to you, just tell Schaefer and I guess they'll make it for you because they make all the upholstery. Don't see why they can't make you a curtain. Anyway, that's all pretty interesting. Let's head upstairs. I'm getting into this Brazilian vibe. So that's the Schaefer 375, guys. Um, quite a clever design. Would you go for the inboard diesels or would you go for the triple outboards? Do you desire coming up to the sandbar or the beach like this or do you want the big transom? That's probably the question you need to ask. And if you're the sort of person who wants to entertain without limits in a package under 40 feet, I reckon this one's really worth your attention. Now, if you like this boat and you want to see how she performs, if you want to see a demonstration of exactly how we did get it onto the beach, that's a separate video. Click on the link and you'll come and join us. You're very welcome. My name's Dan Jones. You'll be watching Dan's Boat Life. See you in the next one.